in ancient times, throughout the different traditions across the globe, the sun was considered a living, thinking deity. In modern times, we're more used to mechanistic, energistic thinking. But could there be some truth in these stories from the past? Could the sun be conscious? Hey there. Today I'd like to contemplate a very interesting question that was sent to me by the infamous Sensei Dan via a video on his YouTube channel. If you'd like to see that video, I'll I'll share the link in the description box below. The question is, could the sun be conscious? Now, this is a a fascinating concept uh, to consider because, of course, in ancient times, the sun was always considered so. You can imagine that if you were observing the sun, though it had set routines and patterns throughout the year, there were other factors that could look like decisions being made. Sometimes the crops would grow, sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes the sun shone harder than others. Uh, Sometimes it just seemed uh, like there were changes taking place up in the sky beyond your understanding. Even in the modern day, when we look at the sun with instruments and analyse it, we're not absolutely sure what's going on a lot of the time. Sometimes there are seemingly random bursts of great energy or matter ejected from it. Uh, There are patterns uh, that uh, seem to suddenly change the polarity of the whole star perhaps we can still relate to our ancestors who weren't sure if uh, things going on there were a simple mechanism of nature. So let us start our exploration of this idea. The first thing that comes to mind to me is that some people see our own planet, the planet Earth, as being conscious. And it's a bit like our our body. We have many cells and that makes up us. And we consider ourselves one whole being. But each uh, cell, it has its own life and its own awareness. So the the planet's like that. Uh, Every plant, every animal, every being on the planet is part of one whole, uh, if viewed from uh, the big picture. So let's consider if any life could evolve on or in the sun. Well, first and foremost, Let's be aware that humans massively underestimate how adaptable life is. Recently, we discovered that some bacteria could live in the uh, water immediately surrounding a volcano where it's actually above boiling temperature. It had adapted to live like that or even evolved to be there. Observers who went to areas near underwater volcanoes were surprised to see uh, that some animals were perfectly happy uh, in this very acidic, very pressured, very hot water. Uh, So sharks and crustaceans and jellyfish, they'd found a way to change over the years so they could live specifically there. If we look at other environments, very dark, deep oceans, very cold environments, areas where there's been a a nuclear disaster, areas where we wouldn't think life could be, it flourishes. So maybe our idea of where life could be is too based on our own understanding. 
Maybe in a, a distant area in, in space where there's, there's only gas. There are whole um, races that created from different gases uh, who couldn't even conceive of solid matter. Maybe there are beings of pure energy that exist within the beams of light uh, coming from distant stars. So if we look at the, the sun and we consider this admittedly improbable proposition that something could exist at such terribly high temperatures in such an environment that, that nothing like us, no DNA, no cells could certainly form. We need to take into account how very large the sun is. You could have a, a million Earths in there. And how amazingly powerful it is. There's a lot of energy. We need to eat to get energy. And, and, and that comes from the sun. Everything here comes from there. But that's the source. So in there, there's huge amounts of radiation and uh, huge amounts of heat and electricity. So it's, it's already there. Likewise, the sun's been there for 4.6 uh, billion billion years is a lot of time for something improbable to happen. Some people postulate that if there is life on the sun, it would be in a different form. It would be formed from heavy metals in a, in a sort of semi-fluid state, or, but sort of formed into some kind of structures, a bit like very large cells, because there's so much space, it wouldn't have to be a small base unit like us. I find myself considering, could there be beings made of heat? Could, in such an environment, could the, could a heat actually hold a, a different pattern in some way? Or, or of electricity, of radiation, could there be beings which are uh, sort of beyond our understanding of what uh, an energy form can do? If we, if we move, uh, beyond the idea of something we can conceptualize and think that some spark of life has, has happened there, then intelligence naturally follows. The reason why I've started this consideration, uh, not just as the sun as a being on its own, but as small uh, sparks of life, uh, some life form in the most simple f um, way starting is because intelligence seems to follow from competition. You know, you, you evolve more uh, intellectual ability to get away from someone or to catch some prey or to compete for something. If we do move aside from that, though, if we if we just ask ourselves the sun itself is it thinking in some way? How could that how could that be? Well, it probably be something. It could be something similar to how our brain works, kind of running on electricity. Maybe there are structures. Maybe there's a lot of variation, a lot of uh, differences on the surface of, of the sun. Just like most of our thought appears to be connected with the surface of our brain, um, but. And I say connected, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later on. So if the sun is thinking using electricity, maybe that's how it's, it's working. But I've also had some other considerations. Some people have designed theoretical computers running on, on heat. So instead of having a, a certain levels of electricity going through a chip that, uh, uh, so it has got a, a binary on off depending on the level of that electricity uh, in complex gates. The same is happening with heat. If it's a certain temperature or, or, uh, or so that this, this is how it functions. And all these designs work in layers of different varying heat. And we know the sun does have that. So it could be a sort of heat computer or heat brain going on there. Or maybe there's something to do with the nuclear energy there that could cause some kind of thought. One thing that is clear is 
If the, the sun is thinking, this giant structure with uh, unimaginable levels of energy, I mean, when people are trying to describe this, they're sort of saying a trillion, trillion megaton bombs and, and sort of figures like that to try to get across to us how, how much of a, a force this is, this whole star. Its consciousness would be vastly different and vastly superior to anything we could even conceive. Maybe it can sense things by maybe the radiation it shines out, maybe by what reflects, maybe it's some kind of echo signal, or maybe it's uh, because of its own sort of aura of electric or magnetic or radiation energy can feel uh, different things. This could be an amazing uh, concept to consider. Now, if we if we con continue our meditation, but we let go a little bit of this scientific model and go back to these wisdom traditions, we do see that within uh, certain traditions, within the Hermetic, uh, within the yogic tradition and within the uh, other uh, practices, some of them less overt in their description that use focus. The idea of uh, the the sun being conscious does appear, and there are some descriptions of uh, why this could be. So, in the in the Hermetic tradition, the whole creation of the universe is through consciousness. Everything is thought. It's just that the original thought is less dense. It's very, very subtle, so dense, um, so subtle that we can't quite uh, detect it as of yet. But as things manifest, they become more and more solid. They become the kind of energy that we know is light and eventually uh, comes down into uh, the uh, gaseous state of original matter and then into the, uh, uh, the liquid and then the solid. Uh, so... Everything around you, everything physical is just like the thoughts in your consciousness. It's just more dense, more solid. So if you're saying everything is made of consciousness, then we must say the sun is conscious. But there's something else. In this hermetic tradition, there is a, a concept that the original force had a first idea, had a first spark of consciousness and in this original mind the first mind that was created uh, she thought into existence uh, some forms some templates that uh, existence has started to radiate out from so this is a, a an emanation and these could be of course those four uh, elements earth air fire water but also we we symbolize these with seven planets now, the reason why we use uh, the planets and these elements is because there's a, a connection with them, a, a sympathy. The chain of existence, this golden chain that came down to create matter, has a resonance uh, pattern. And this means that the sun, we can imagine this could be the original thought of light or the original thought of creativity. The sun is connected with this this original thought. So... In a sense, it shines forth not just the, the physical light, but a kind of light of this original concept. And it has a, a link. All stars would have a link to this original thought. So in a sense, it's, it's not only is it thinking, it's, it's always been, it is the start of thinking. Now, that we have seen uh, the different possibilities, we could ask ourselves, how would we know? Well, I don't think for a long time it's going to be by using instruments or uh, sending a, a rocket to be near to the sun or probes or anything like that. I think that if there is a consciousness so immeasurably strong there, uh, then the experiments may start with you. You see, from the hermetic point of view, your brain is just uh, the receiver. Your consciousness uh, is 
a uh, part of this subtle force, this mind stuff, this original higher uh, intelligence. And so too, this means that you could tune in uh, to the consciousness uh, of this great luminary. Think of it in terms of a, a radio and a receiver. Uh, so uh, the the radio itself is uh, a receiver and people could think that the thoughts were from there, just like we think uh, modernly that the thoughts come from our brain, uh, but there's something higher, there's something transmitting. Uh, this is your original consciousness. Now, interestingly enough, meditation on the sun does exist in uh, different traditions. We see in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, it clearly stated that you gain knowledge of the the movements of the the planets and the nature of the universe by meditation on the sun. And in other yogic texts, it talks about uh, contacting consciousnesses on the sun. Hermetic texts also have uh, intense uh, practices that involve focusing on the sun uh, twice a day as a sort of tuning in. Uh, so uh, maybe if you meditate if you fix your mind on the sun fully, without uh, wavering, without distraction, if you uh, become at one with this light, you will be able to answer Dan's question yourself. My name is Martin Folks, and I hope this video was of interest to everyone watching it. Until next time, let's make every word thought and action count.